Hello and welcome to another Jog Vlogs revision session. This session is going to be looking at a very specific part of one of the papers that you're going to be facing um, in your exam series and it's going to focus today on the discuss question. So um, the discuss question is a very individual question and it will only appear once in the entire exam series. So in this session I'm going to outline to you um, what you need to do with the discuss question as well as modeling some answers. I'm going to provide you a structure just like in my other essay sort of support sessions where I make eight markers easy. You can answer the discuss question in a very um, repeatable way and if you memorize that structure you really should have all of the kind of main work in structuring your answers and your paragraphs done for you. Obviously you still need to remember it. Um, I'm also going to show you um, how to maybe provide a, a sort of a decent conclusion and I've got a writing frame for that too as well as showing you um, a pupil's answer and some examiner reports to give you some information about what they're really looking for in these types of questions. So um, the discuss question in summary is a 16 mark question but four of those marks are for SPAG so we're going to ignore those four marks and we're hoping they look after themselves. So those 12 marks for this question which makes it you know, 50% more valuable than a standard eight mark essay question um, and also requires you to provide a little bit more detail than you would expect for an eight mark question. Um, there's going to be only one as I've mentioned in the entire exam series and that will be the final question of the final paper. Okay, it's the last question on paper three. Um, the different thing about the discuss question, um, the, the thing that distinguishes it more from those other essay questions is that it uses several resources uh, and you need to use several resources in producing your answer. Um, now, examine questions, which appear on the UK landscapes topic, so the, the paper one, topic one, for rivers and coasts, use a resource, but they only use one. So each examine question will only use one resource that you must refer to. This one could include three or even four resources, and you need to refer to every single one of them in some way in your answer. And in fact, the resources are going to be the basis for each paragraph that you produce. Um, the other thing that the exam board really, really want to see is your own knowledge. So not only do you have to use resources, but you need to use your own knowledge too. And that knowledge could come from the um, UK challenges topics, but it could also be drawn from any of the other topics you've covered in papers one and two. It really doesn't matter as long as it's your own knowledge as well as using the resource too. Um, now, as I've mentioned already, and how I've helped you structure those eight mark assess, evaluate, examine questions, you can structure the discuss question. It's very slightly differently, um, but it is something which if you memorize and practice, you can take the hassle out of structuring it. OK, um, and the reason it, it can take the hassle out of structuring it is because we know it's a discuss question. We don't need to think, well, hang on a minute, check the, the command word. The last question on the last paper will be discuss as the command word. So you can structure every single time this way. Um, but discussion is um, essentially where you are presented with a viewpoint. OK, it will come up with a statement. A bold statement and you have to either agree or disagree overall with that statement but along the way you've got to present both sides to the discussion because you're a geographer you know balance is really really important so it will present you a statement and you have to identify both sides of the kind of discussion the agreeing side and the disagreeing side now what I mean by that is let's take an example of a, of a question that you know you might be able to relate to um, the viewpoint that someone might put out there is school uniform makes students better learners. OK, that's a statement and you can either agree with that statement or you can disagree with that statement. Now, along the way, there'll be resources that you can use which help prove either, you know, one side of the argument or the other. Um, and it's up to you to also present the other side within a paragraph. Um, now, I've already mentioned this, we know it's going to be discussed, so we can focus on the content only and the issue we're discussing. Um, and the other good thing about this is that you have extra time in this paper to answer this question. This whole paper is only worth 64 marks. Take off the four for SPAG and it's only worth 60. So you've got half an hour extra that you are not expected to necessarily be um, you know, producing a mark a minute. And that extra 30 minutes is going to allow you to use and read the resources really effectively 
and then spend the time focusing on producing a detailed answer, detailed response. Okay, so this is the structure that you should be able to memorize and then use. Once I've outlined the structure, I'm going to show you how it applies in um, specific examples of exam questions. So the first thing you must do in your paragraph is you name and describe what the first resource shows. It won't be called resource one, it'll be called resource 5D or 5E, okay? But you name and describe the first resource uh, and what it shows. So that is going to require you to look at the resource carefully and just work out what it's showing you. And then you write that down as a sentence. Then you talk about how that resource either agrees or disagrees with the view that's been presented. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll again I'll use an analogy for this in a second, and then you use something from that resource explicitly in your work as evidence, a figure, a fact, something you literally just lift straight away from the resource into your work that proves that it agrees or disagrees with the view. Then, because you've got to also show your own knowledge, you then try and use your own knowledge to give the opposing side, the opposite position. So if the resource agreed with the viewpoint, then you would have to show your own knowledge about how it disagrees with the viewpoint. And again, try and include a specific stat or some, some info that you've either got from your own knowledge, or you can use other information that's included in the resource as evidence too. Now this little five step process is just one paragraph, so you'd use this for every single resource. Okay, and if you do it for four resources, you're going to have four good sized paragraphs. But you've also made sure by following the structure that you've used the resource explicitly and evidence from it. And you've incorporated your own knowledge, because if you follow this, it will force you to do both. And that's what the exam board really want. And that's what's going to lead to the best marks. So you'll do that for every resource mentioned in the question. And you're going to conclude it. So in your conclusion, of which I've given you a writing frame later on in this video, um, you are essentially stating explicitly overall whether you agree or disagree with the viewpoint. Um, and you've got a reason, you've got to justify it. So a bit like an assess question, you've got to work out which of the arguments is the most significant or most convincing for you. Right, so this is a typical question, okay? Now before we tackle this question, I'm going to show you how this structure works with an analogy. So let's take that one I already said. Okay, the viewpoint is school uniform makes students better learners. Okay, and I've got a resource. The resource is a graph. Let's say it's a, a, a bar chart which shows along the bottom um, the uh, schools that have a uniform and on the right hand side schools that don't have a uniform. Okay, and then, then each bar shows you the average test score. Now, if in this bar chart, OK, it showed you that the schools that had a uniform uh, got an average test score of 80 percent and the schools with no uniform showed a test score of 60 percent. I could then use this resource, couldn't I? So I'd say resource 5D shows a graph that gives you the average test score for schools with and without uniforms. OK, that's point one. The resource agrees with the view presented because it shows you that schools that have uniforms perform better in tests by their score. Um, this is shown by the 80% score compared to the 60% score of the non-uniform schools. However, there is more than one, this is where I use my own knowledge, there is more than one reason for students to do well in a test. For example, the places that have uniforms might be in more wealthy areas, and more wealthy areas are more likely to be able to afford private tutors, which push up their test scores. And then you can use a stat or specific info from either resource or your own knowledge. So you could say, for example, um, the more deprived areas of Norwich of Mile Cross have lower um, school scores than the uh, wealthier parts of Norwich, despite all having to wear uniforms as well. OK, now that is just me quoting Norwich and I've quoted Mile Cross okay so that's specific enough and I've identified that Mile Cross Primary School wears uniform now I don't know whether they do or not but if they do um, the examiner's not going to know anyway so you can just pretend they do and that kind of disproves the point doesn't it disagrees with that viewpoint so that's how that is structured and if you you know please feel free obviously I haven't got resource and things feel free to re rewind the video and, and just listen to that again and see how it applies 
Now, obviously, that's a basic step, and we're going to be applying it to something to do with the UK challenges section. So let's take on this question now. All the questions you face will be structured in a very similar way. They'll have this little bit about SPAG, which you just, you know, you can kind of pretty much ignore. Um, then they'll have this little bit that will always be the same, essentially. OK, it won't it will only differ with the number of figures you've got. So it'll always say use information from the resource booklet an instruction it's telling you you must use figures 5d to 5f as well as knowledge and understanding from the rest of your geography course that means your own knowledge so in short use the resources and your own knowledge not you may you should definitely okay now what is the viewpoint here's the viewpoint sustainable transport schemes will significantly improve the environment so your answer needs to basically include information about sustainable transport schemes things like park and ride congestion charges public use bicycles bus lanes things that you've actually done in the uk challenges topic for um, population and consumption you look at sustainable transport you look at those, you three of those things park and ride in norwich congestion charging and, and public use bicycles but it might also include other things to show your own knowledge so there are more things that can improve the environment aren't there than just transport you can improve the environment in a number of ways but you are trying to basically either agree or disagree with the view that sustainable transport significantly improves the environment now in some ways it will in other ways it won't so this is what your um, work is going to include so now we've got our question dissected and we know what we're going to be including and what resources to use we'll start with our first figure figure 5d so figure 5D, here is the question, and I would absolutely urge everybody to keep referring back to the view, so the thing you're discussing, before you start every paragraph. This will just keep that focus, okay, the, of making sure you're structuring it well. So again, it, the, the viewpoint is sustainable transport schemes will significantly improve the environment. That's what we're trying to agree and disagree with. And this resource, okay, shows um, a bus and with lots of information around it. So I've put the structure up here to remind you, and I've also put in there look, the resources can sometimes be paired into the same paragraph, and they usually appear on the same page if that's the case. Okay, so um, but that's just you know a rare occasion, so it might not be used. So name and describe what resource one shows. Uh, figure five D shows an example of London's newer, more sustainable public buses. Okay, I've spent the time just to, you know a couple of minutes just to look at that, read it. What does it tell me? Um, so now I've named and described it, using the information in there, does it agree with that statement or disagree? Well, this is a sustainable transport scheme, making buses better. It's going to probably have evidence that agrees that it's going to reduce um, issues in the environment. It's going to significantly improve the environment. So this shows a number of things which will help the environment re by reducing CO2. Okay, How does that agree with the statement? The things are going to reduce CO2. Then I've got an example. For example, the 2.3 billion journeys, I've just lifted that straight from this paragraph here, this, this statement, um, will reduce annual emissions by 20,600 tonnes. There you go. I've combined a couple of stats to use the resource. Now, I've got to show my own knowledge. So what information have I not included in this, is not present in this, which I know is also worthwhile? Um, remember, I'm looking, is it, does it significantly improve the environment? Well, even though, you know, these, this is great, the buses still use diesel, okay? It's diesel hybrid, diesel electric hybrid. So it's still going to use diesel, and diesel will still emit CO2, whereas bi bicycles don't emit CO2 at all. So I can say this, however, still uses diesel, and introducing public use bicycles would emit no CO2 at all. So this is better. This would be more significant, wouldn't it? So this kind of disagrees with the viewpoint. You know, are these buses going to help improve the environment significantly? A little bit, yes, but you could do better. That's kind of what I'm, in, I'm introducing here. Now, your knowledge doesn't have to come from the course. It can be from just something you watch in the news. OK, ideally, it would be from the course. But I know, for example, that after 2035, any new private vehicles will have to be electric. OK, so the government clearly think that diesel is still too emitting it's not good because they're pledging that they're going to get rid of all diesel cars by 2035 so the fact that these are diesel still tells you that actually they're not significantly improving the environment they're kind of doing it a little bit okay so you can see how steps one to five have been incorporated in this paragraph relating to this resource 
and I've included my own knowledge. I've mentioned public use bicycles. I've mentioned um, the government targets of, of you know, electric vehicles. Okay, so the second resource, and this will be our second paragraph. Again, refer to the particular viewpoint you're studying. Look at the structure and now take step one. Step one it means I'm going to have to look at this resource. Right, what does it show? CO2 emissions in Greater London. Um, there's a graph here and it shows you that, well, this clearly shows CO2 emissions. So I'm guessing that this shows me transport emissions were 21% of all. And of transport emissions, the types of transport contributed this much. So I can see that all transport emissions that were about a fifth of the emissions in Greater London um, were divided up this way. And half of them, nearly 47% of that, 21%. So about 10% of all emissions in London came from cars and motorbikes not buses. Buses only account for 6%. Vans, 7 lorries, 9 Railways, 10%. London Underground, 7 etc. Okay? So, now I know what this resource shows, I can do step 1. Figure 5e shows the sources of CO2 emissions by sector, and then a breakdown of those by transport type. Okay? Simple sentence to summarise what it shows. How does this resource agree or disagree with the view in the discussion? Well, Sustainable transport, okay, is not going to involve pub, you know, the private stuff like cars and bikes. It's going to be railways, buses, London Underground. So it's going to involve like public transport, isn't it? So the percentage of buses, and we've we had a resource that talks about buses, so let's focus on that. Buses are only six percent of the overall transport emissions, which remember are only twenty one percent of overall emissions. So six percent of twenty one percent is not very much. Um, so that suggests that the new route master buses, which are from the last resource, are not actually going to have a significant benefit on the environment. So it actually kind of disagrees with the statement. Sustainable transport clearly won't have a significant improvement because if you just if you even if you improved all of the public transport here, the buses, National Rail, London Underground, that's still less than a quarter of all tra traffic emissions. So it's not going to be very much, you know, less than a quarter of a fifth. It's, it's tiny amounts. Um, and then I'm going to use a quote. For example, they still use only 50% of the fuel, um, or so they still use 50% of the fuel, and therefore, by using the route master buses, you're only going to reduce emissions by 3, you know, by 3% of this 21%. So it's a small amount. Again, I've just used the figures in a creative way. So now I've got to try and use my own knowledge to give the opposite side. So because this resource disagrees with the statement, my own knowledge is going to show how it could agree. And I know that London don't just, you know, focus on improving sustainable transport for public transport. I know they're also focusing on helping to reduce the number of cars and motorbikes in London. And they're doing that with the congestion charge. So London, however, also have the congestion charge which should reduce cars and motorcycles, which would have uh, reduced far more significantly improved the environment in central London. Okay, um, And I can also mention another thing. Norwich have six park and ride sites, which significantly improve air quality in central Norwich. I've just added a bit more detail. Right, next resource. Again, here's my viewpoint. Here's my resource. Got to make sure I read it carefully. There's loads on this one. And there's my structure that I'm going to follow. And I'm just going to leave this on the board, uh, sorry, on the screen for you, so you can read it through. I don't need to talk through every single bit, but you can see, and this is a bit more wordy, I've used it a bit more, but it's a bigger resource, so maybe you expect that, um, to read through about how I've structured that and how it uh, applies to the structure and follows the rules I've kind of laid out already. When you're ready, unpause the screen uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you about a conclusion. Okay, so in the conclusion, the best way to structure it um, again, have that focus, you know, what statement are you agreeing or disagreeing with? Overall, I agree or disagree that. That is the best way to start your conclusion, okay? Overall, I agree or disagree that transport schemes will significantly improve the environment, okay? You, you pick one side. This is particularly the case when, okay, or this is particularly due to anything like that, where you name one of the things that you've already outlined you particularly agree or disagree with. Okay, and try and extend it. So, I overall I agree that blah. This is particularly the case because this, because blah. So again, you, this is your opportunity to justify really good, really well your conclusion, which shouldn't be just one sentence. It needs to be more. 
You've also got to show, though, you're a geographer, so you know that that's not the, the only side to the argument. So, however, or on the other hand, or conversely, it also is the case that, and again, name another aspect, but tell me why that aspect is less important, less significant, less convincing overall. And that will give you a good conclusion. Okay, so this, again, I haven't given you a modelled answer to this one because it depends how you interpret the information. Um, but this is for this particular question which was a real question this is the examiner's report and feedback about what they found okay so examiner's report really all teachers should look at them really to give you advice about what they are looking for so the question was well received by many candidates who were able to effectively use the evidence provided by the figures to provide an argument on the view of use of sustainable transport schemes generally candidates responses could be divided into two types those that use the resources or figures to form an argument and those that went beyond transport schemes and discussed other methods that could contribute to promoting sustainability. The latter, i.e. the people that were that, that used both the resources and their own knowledge, okay, were the ones that got the higher marks. That's what this means. Okay, so people that just used the figures probably got maybe up to eight marks with a good conclusion. That's not bad. That, you know, eight marks out of 12, 66% on this paper would get you grade six. Okay. Um, those that got better marks, you know, nine, 10, 11, whatever, level three standard marks, okay, and therefore grade seven and up, were the ones that didn't just focus on the resources, they also showed their own knowledge. Okay. So let's give you another example, okay, of another question. You can see again. You've got your spelling, punctuation and grammar blurb. Then you've got the thing that's going to say user resources. These are the ones you use and your own knowledge. OK, that won't change. Then it talks about the statement, the thing, the viewpoint. A two speed economy exists between the southeast, including London and the rest of the UK. We know that we found that in um, one of our economic challenges OK, uh, for the UK challenges section. This has created differences in economic and social opportunities that need to be reduced. So we're talking about the two speed economy. You need to know what that is, what it involves and the viewpoint you are agreeing and disagreeing with or presenting both sides is that the two speed economy creates different economic and social opportunities. OK, that we should reduce. Discuss this view. OK, so um, that's the content. That's the thing we agree or disagree with. Like I mentioned, this is your first resource 5C. OK, because again, I'm just checking. 5C, D, E, and F. There's four resources in this case. So here's the first resource. There's your question to refer to. There's the structure, which won't be written in your paper. You need to memorize that. And this is how I've applied that. Now, this is, again, incredibly wordy. This is written like a teacher would write because I am a teacher. But I hope that you can see the structure just as well. So I'm going to let you pause the screen in your own time, read my answer check how it applies, read the resource, have a little look, make sure you understand it, because that they're all the key elements to developing a good paragraph. Remember, that's just one paragraph, but you wouldn't probably be expected to produce anywhere near that. But some of you can, and therefore I don't want to lowball you. I want you to aim high if you can. Okay, so pause the screen and when you're ready, unpause and I'll talk you through the other resources in the same way. Okay, this is the second resource refer to the uh, viewpoint you're discussing. There's the structure to help you visualize it. And there's an answer. So again, pause the screen, read it through, check the, the um, structure and how it applies um, and see if you understand it well. Okay, figure 5E, viewpoint, structure, my answer. Again, I'm sorry it's so wordy, but you know, I want to present to you, the, you know, the, the the best possible. There are students that can produce this much work, especially given an extra 30 minutes additional time. OK, and the last resource. So if you're not ready, please, again, pause and, and read through. Sorry about that alarm. The uh, last resource is here, which is a sort of a load of quotes, viewpoints. There's my viewpoint I'm going to refer to. There's my structure and there's a response. Again, pause the screen. And when you're ready, you can unpause it. The bell will go shortly as well. You'll hear that in the background. Apologies. 
All right, and then your conclusion, again, refer to your viewpoint within your conclusion, there it is. Um, overall, I disagree or agree that. Same structure as I showed you before. It will work for you, okay? It will work the same. So, yes, there's a lot to memorize, just like there is in geography. But when you consider how much content you've got to memorize, doing a five-point structure and using a conclusion writing frame, if you can memorize these and, and use it to help you, it will take a lot of the burden out of structuring your essay and thinking on your feet you know you can just fill in the blanks all right so um this question and this is the examiner's report again i'll talk you through this um was not marked or not scored as easily you can see a significant proportion of the candidates scored between seven and nine marks you know you, it was um eight to ten in the last one so this is obviously a more tricky question the question was answered uh, was well answered by the majority of candidates who were able to extract information from the figures to formulate an argument on the view of the two-speed economy. The best responses that scored the highest marks used evidence from the figures and their wider geographical knowledge and understanding from their studies to support their argument. So it's exactly the same feedback from the two years, isn't it? Some candidates got just used the figures, probably got maybe seven marks. The best candidates used the figures and their own knowledge. That's why my structure will work for you. If you're aiming for, for better marks, you've got to include figures and your own knowledge. The additional evidence often related to migration and high speed two, HS2. The majority of candidates provided a conclusion at the end of their response, which was often a repetition of their argument rather than a substantiated conclusion referring back to the question asked. This is a horrible way of the examiner saying the conclusions were just a bit of a, you know, rubbish ending what you need to do in your conclusion is refer back to the viewpoint refer back to the question and again my advice always refer back to the question before you start your conclusion if you follow my advice you'll do well some of the candidates started their response with the view on a two-speed economy which is equally acceptable um, in terms of spelling punctuation and grammar don't worry about that okay so this basically tells you definitely use the resources absolutely include your own knowledge and in your conclusion structure it like I've structured it refer back to the viewpoint that you need to answer all right okay now what does this look like from a student's point of view because I've already shown you the um, you know my answer given my ability to you know use resources quite quickly I teach this content I've, I've done it so many times my revision is done I can rattle off answers quite quickly and I can type quickly um, you guys will not be expected to do as much detail as that, but I didn't want to show you, like I said, a brief answer. Let's have a look at this pupil's response to see kind of how it weighs up. All right, um, I'm going to have to try and decipher their writing. So this is the same question, okay? I mostly agree with this view. However, I think that there are already advances in place that have made the northern UK more equal to the southeast. So it's already started by talking about their view. You, I'd leave this till the end. And schemes that are going to close this gap even more. However, it is undeniable there is a gap in the economy and opportunities between the two sections, especially in London. For example, many of the best opportunities in the country uh, has to offer are in the southern area, such as the best private schools, the best universities such as Oxford and Cambridge, and the biggest uh, branches or headquarters of many UK businesses in almost any sector. This bit is very nicely showing the, the candidate's own knowledge. This puts the rest of the UK at a disadvantage, as there are not as many opportunities available in northern Scottish, uh, Irish or Welsh cities, putting pressure on businesses or people from other areas who may try and compete with this. In addition, people in the South East overall have a higher disposable income. That's using the resource, not very well, but it is using the resource, and therefore have a different attitude to life. The Coropleth map in figure 5C, hooray, they've started to refer to it, shows this, with London having a higher amount of excess money than anywhere else in the UK. In comparison to this, the economy on things such as housing prices is also uh, higher to keep up with demand, which can mean people moving to these areas from the north can struggle more than the locals, as reflected in the statement from figure 5F where a couple um, moved uh, out of London because of the rising rental costs. That's nice, they've used a quote from the resources. On the other hand, even though the North may seem deprived in comparison to the South, Southeast, it, there is a large amount of development happening in cities that, uh, there that are rapidly catching up to the likes of London. Birmingham is one example of this, as there are more businesses starting there and opportunities are rising rapidly, bringing new growth and development. 
There is also schemes in place to close this gap, such as the Northern Powerhouse strategy, mentioned in Figure 5F. This shows there are already steps in place to remedy the problem and that the North is likely to catch up very quickly. Furthermore, the South East also faces problems with deprivation similar to the rest of the UK, especially in certain areas of London where there are high amounts of serious violent crime and unemployment, showing that there is still such a large gap in areas of the UK due to other factors. In conclusion, I believe this statement is fundamentally correct, however the differences are being reduced efficiently. Now that, for me, is a terrible conclusion. <laughs> um, it's four sentences, four lines long. It doesn't refer to any specific evidence. It doesn't really justify itself. But this response actually got eight marks out of 12. Now, I don't think this response used the um, resources particularly well. I also think it didn't use all the resources. It, it mentioned maybe three of the four resources. It also only used them ever so slightly for their argument. They clearly used their own knowledge in their answers, which was really good. Um, but um, essentially, you know, it didn't require, it didn't have a lot. And, and actually, if you follow my structure, you will be far better off because you'll incorporate far more detail uh, more regularly into your answer. And so this one says for level three, so you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 marks, a greater range of evidence would be required. OK, range of evidence, including from their wider course. I don't think this answer is particularly good. I think it waffles a bit. If you follow my structure, you can produce far, far better than this showed. OK, that is the end of this session on how to answer and structure discuss questions. Hopefully the modelled answers and the um, examiner's feedback have kind of helped you. And I'm hoping the structure for both the paragraphs and the conclusion will really guide you in the right direction when it comes to tackling this little beast. And if you can tackle this and, and get even a good average score of eight marks out of 12, you are well on the way to one of those highest grades. OK, thank you very much for listening um, and uh, good luck with the exam.